Okay, so Roman Bashka, he's, a, um, uh, as I said, a lecturer at the Kanda University of International Studies in Japan. Okay, so okay. Uh, thank you for the introduction. I'm really uh, glad to be here today. Um, and um, my presentation today is actually a continuation of the presentation that I did last year in uh, Barcelona. Um, I referred mostly to Anders Schoeke's uh, <clears throat> use of language uh, as, a, as a means of criticizing uh, the Tokugawa um, <coughs> shogunate. Uh, but today I'm gonna, and today I'm going to focus on uh, this concept of Hito, uh, especially the Hito as it, uh, the human being as it appears in, uh, in society. Uh, but first, uh, just a couple of things about um, Shoki's uh, legacy, his work, and uh, about the, his concept of the uh, human being as homo naturalis, the human being integrated uh, within nature. Um, so it, it, as I said, um, Shoki is, um, well, he's been considered uh, original or obscure or fascinating or uh, utopian or radical, uh, there are a lot of uh, opinions about uh, about Shoiki. Um, what uh, I think is extremely important in uh, in his case is the fact that he criticizes almost all the major uh, philosophical traditions in uh, East Asian thinking. Uh, he criticizes Buddhism, he criticizes Confucianism, uh, Shintoism, and so on and so forth. And he tries to come up with his own um, philosophical uh, system. Uh, and uh, his major work uh, is um, called Shizen Shin Edo, which again has been, the title has been translated in a variety of ways. Uh, personally, I prefer uh, this one for concision, the true way of the functioning of, uh, of nature. Uh, and in Shizen Shin Edo, he proposes a vision of the world where two completely different realms uh, exist. And uh, one of these, um, the first realm is uh, Shizen no Yo, the so-called world of nature, uh, and uh, <coughs> in which he puts forth an image of nature as this uh, self-sufficient, um, complete realm, complete in itself, uh, which is governed by natural uh, principle and, uh, and forces. In other words, uh, a primordial nature, pristine uh, world of nature, if you want. And opposed to this, uh, there is Shihose, what uh, Shoiki calls Shihose, uh, or simply just Hose, uh, which is the world of the private law, uh, and which basically means uh, human society. Uh, and uh, today I'm going to uh, focus on the image of the human, uh, human being in Shihose, in the, this realm of the, of the private law. Um, first, I'm going to... Um, you know, explain a couple of things about uh, the human being uh, as it appears in the world of uh, nature, and then uh, I'll move on to uh, the world of the um, private law. So, uh, in <coughs> first of all, in Shoeki's vision, as I've already said, nature is this realm uh, which is made up of spontaneous energies that uh, circulate um, constantly between uh, heaven and earth, and they pass. Uh, through the ground uh, in the middle, and the, the ground and the seas in, in the middle, and all creatures that exist in this um, world of uh, nature are born uh, this way. And here's a quote uh, where of, uh, with uh, Shoiki's definition of nature. Uh, nature, Shizen, and uh, by the way, uh, he specifies, I know that the, uh, the word uh, that we now read as Shizen was usually read Jinen at the time, uh, but uh, in his works, uh, Shueki specifies that it should be read as uh, Shizen. There's a, a, a note uh, in one of his um, books where he says that the first uh, character should be read as Shi, and the other one should be read as uh, Zen. So Shizen and not uh, Jinen. Uh, so, his definition is that nature, Shizen, is the special name of the subtle way of mutual natures, and here he introduces the concept of Gose, and the mutual natures. But what are the mutual natures? They're the spontaneous <coughs> movement of the primary matter of Earth, which is beginningless and endless, which advances and retreats to a greater or lesser degree, uh, and consequ cons <coughs> consequently, they're beginning beginningless and endless, uh, this dynamic process is the subtle way. It is subtle because of the existence of the mutual natures, 
and it is a way because of the interaction of these uh, mutual natures. Therefore, this is called uh, Shizen, this is called nature. Uh, and as you can see, he introduces here, uh, so he has the, the concept of uh, mutual natures, the Gose, which is actually a key concept in his understanding of nature, and not only of nature, but also of the human being within uh, the world of, uh, of nature. Um, <coughs> in, um, in his vision, in this um, in concept of uh, Gose, uh, the second character, the, the Se, uh, in Shoiki's understanding means something like uh, embedded feature or an inner characteristic, um, which means for him, in, in his uh, view of nature, all elements that are found in this world of nature, they're in a relationship of gose, of something that I call functional reciprocity. Uh, I don't have a better term for it yet, but um, the idea is that each of the two entities, no matter uh, if they're physical entities or, uh, for example, just energies uh, circulating in between heaven and earth. So each of the two entities contains within itself the essence of the other. And to be more specific, uh, here's how Shoiki talks about the human being, the homo naturalis, as it appears in the world of nature. And he, as you can see, he uses here, again, the concept of uh, gose and se, the inner characteristic, um, here's a, how he sees the relationship between men and women. He says the primary matter is constantly acting in a subtle manner through the mutual natures of the mass and retreat without a moment's pause. The nature of the man is the woman, and the nature of the woman is the man. With their mutual natures of men and women, they're the human being as manifestation of the primary matter. Uh, and in other words, for him, uh, the human being, the hito, is uh, men and women seen as a single person. Uh, which is not merely a temporary, uh, um, a provisional pairing of uh, two different entities. Uh, he even goes so far as to propose a new uh, um, mm. compound, uh, which is written with the two ideographs, uh, Otoko and Ona, for men and women, but he says that this should not be read as Danjo, but as simply as uh, Hito. Uh, so in his case, this gose, this notion of uh, mutual nature, is not a notion of uh, parasitic uh, reciprocity, but mutual uh, independence of the two uh, entities. And in this case, each of the two entities uh, support and enhance all the features and characteristics and qualities of the other uh, entity. Uh, so, <coughs> um, not only are one man and one, one woman uh, in this relationship of uh, mutual natures, of a functional reciprocity, but uh, this can also be expanded to uh, the whole of humanity. Uh, in other words, all hito, all uh, human beings are one hito because, again, they're interlinked by this principle of gose, this principle of uh, mutual natures. And um, the idea is that the human being cannot just exist without uh, the other human beings. Again, in a, a relationship of uh, gose. Um, and <coughs> talking about this uh, vision of, uh, of the human being within the, uh, the world of nature, I refer to this as the homo uh, naturalis, uh, the, the way in which uh, the human being functions in the world of nature. Now, uh, as I've said, uh, Shoiki does, uh, mm, makes a very clear-cut distinction between the world of nature and uh, Shihose, the world of the private law. Uh, and opposed to the homo naturalis in the, uh, in the world of, um, of nature, uh, there's this concept of hito in society. I don't have a name for it yet. Uh, this is still work in progress. I'm still working on it. Um, but uh, the idea is that mm, since the two uh, realms, uh, the realm of nature and the realm of uh, human society, are completely opposed uh, and they have nothing in common, the uh, hito, the human being, as it appears in the two realms, is, um, of course, different. Um, and basically, they have nothing in, uh, in common. Um, <coughs> in Shoeki's vision of the world, uh, in Shoeki's vision of uh, human society, um, the, uh, one of the main uh, problems is the division between the ruler and, uh, and the rule, the division between self and uh, the others. Uh, and in his, um, in his writings, he talks a lot about the teachings of the sages. 
uh, the sages of old. He, he has a lot of references to the, the sages, the seiji or kenji, uh, the wise, uh, the wise men of the uh, old days. Uh, and he says that the, the teachings, the writings of these sages provide the ideological basis for uh, this division between uh, ruler and rule, self and others, and so on and so forth. Now, when he talks about the teachings of, of, of the sages, the term that he uses uh, in, all the time is the law, ho. Uh, and he says that this law represents division uh, in contrast to uh, mutuality, the mutuality that you find in the world of nature, the law, uh, represents separation. It's artifice, it's artificial in contrast to uh, nature and uh, the law does not create uh, human society but destroys it and so on and so forth. And uh, what he means by law is actually the writing, any writing that has anything to do with the religious or uh, ideological system of any kind. So when he, he talks about law, ho, uh, he refers at the same time to Buddhism, Confucianism, Shintoism, uh, and everything else. Uh, in, um, in his vision, uh, the Buddhist uh, sutras and the um, uh, Confucian uh, writings, they have uh, basically the same purpose, which is that of uh, dividing society, creating uh, rulers, and uh, basically controlling human uh, society. They, they were devised as a means to control uh, human society. Uh, to uh, illustrate his vision of the, this, uh, human, the way the human being is presented in uh, society, uh, I'm going to focus today on uh, some of the parables that um, Shoiki uses in his um, Shizenshin Edo. There are four parables, uh, dialogues uh, between the uh, various animals, birds, uh, crawling creatures, and the different types of uh, fish. Uh, and I have a couple of quotes. Uh, for example, this one is from the parable of uh, the crawling creatures, uh, where he says, he talks about the uh, three uh, different kinds of uh, energies that exist in the universe. They're the descending energy, ascending energy, and lateral energy. And um, all the uh, different kinds of creatures, uh, they're created by, uh, in, in all these kinds of creatures, there's one certain energy which is uh, more prominent. And in the case of the crawling creatures, since they crawl, the lateral energy is the strongest. So he says that, this is from the dialogue of the crawling creatures, uh, initially human society was dominated by the descending energy, but certain human beings who were born with an unbalanced spirit of purity came to be dominated by the lateral energy. And so they created self-serving laws and established human society. Uh, and as you can see, he uses again uh, the, uh, the term, he uses here the term self-serving uh, laws. Uh, he associates uh, watashi, the, the private, the, the self, with the uh, uh, law. And the, um, uh, the, the term in the original for human society is uh, hose, um, as you can uh, see in the, in the Japanese quote. Consequently, human society has become the same as the world of crawling creatures, which is dominated by the lateral energy, the unbalanced energy, the unbalanced mind, and unbalanced behavior. They're all manifestations of this uh, lateral energy. So, in other words, the world of humans, uh, human society, is no better than the world of uh, crawling creatures. Um, and... In my... Uh, <laughs> Therefore, the hierarchy of human society, where big devours small, and the hierarchy of our world, the world of crawling creatures, where big devours small, are exactly the same. And so it is that the actions of human beings in human society are no different from the actions of crawling creatures in their world. So, uh, as opposed to the homo naturalis, uh, who is a, an ideal uh, sort of human being integrated in, 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 the whole, in, the, in the big, intricate web of nature, the, the Human being in human society, the human being in this uh, world of the private law, is uh, in no way better than the crawling creatures, or than the uh, animals, or than the uh, birds, or the, the fishes. Uh, so in, in the world of nature, where, again, the human being is uh, integrated, um, the um, human being is, in a way, for Anders uh ahistorical. Uh, there's, and that's because there's no concept of history, there's no concept of time. Uh, because all the irreversible processes of human life, uh, including birth and death and uh, everything, they're absorbed again in the cycles of, 
uh, nature seasons, and um, we always live exclusively in the here and uh, and the now. Uh, it's, a, it's a sort of uh, permanent uh, present uh, moment. Uh, on the other hand, in human society, uh, for Shoeki, uh, the creation, the, uh, the, the the creation of the of the laws, the creation of the uh, Buddhist and Confucian and um, other writings uh, meant the creation of history. So history began with the transformation of the original world of nature, the uh, Shizen no Yo, into the uh, Shihose, the world of the private law, uh, with the self-serving laws of the uh, sages of old. Uh, <coughs> so, in, whereas in, in, in the uh, world of nature, uh, this uh, cyclical time of human society that was united to the beginningless and endless cyclical time of uh, nature was interrupted by the actions of uh, human beings, and thus history was born. And history for Andrzejewicz is nothing but the history of humanity, humanity's uh, infinite deviation from the spontaneous uh, activity of, uh, of nature. And this gap uh, between this uh, cyclical, uh, beginning, um, beginningless and endless uh, time of nature, uh, on the one hand, and the time of human society, in other words, history, on the other, uh, is at the root of the human uh, predicament in uh, Shoriki's vision. Uh, <coughs> and then, um, to illustrate this, this is just a short quote about um, uh, Shoriki's vision, um, in um, talking about the fact that for him, society is clearly uh, a deviation from uh, the way of nature. So in other words, the, um, the way in which the human being is perceived in um, acts in society uh, is again a deviation from the true way of nature. It's a deviation from the uh, homo naturalis uh, that's integrated within, uh, within nature. Uh, here's another quote from uh, another one of the, of the parables. This time it's from the parable of the birds. Uh, where uh, one specific bird, um, uh, a cock, if I'm not mistaken, says, therefore I'm the superior man, uh, the kunshi, and he uses the term kunshi, and the valiant warrior of the world of birds, the superior man of human society is nothing more than a selfish and petty confection. I, for one, uh, am a true superior man because I was born as one in the world of birds. So uh, here's a very good example of uh, the... Um, vision uh, that Shoeki has about the Hito, the human being in uh, human society, it's nothing more than a selfish and petty confection. There's nothing, uh, as I was saying, uh, one of the biggest differences between uh, Shizen no Yo and Shihose is this distinction between natural and artificial. Uh, and the human being is um, in, in Shihose, in the world of uh, private law, can not be uh, anything else than a selfish and uh, petty confection, something that's invented. Um, and again, in the parable of the fishes, he says, um, when he tries to justify his use of these uh, parables, uh, he says that my description of the world of the four types of creatures is not motivated by hatred for human society, uh, but by the sadness of the great difference between the true way of nature and the self-serving law and uh, of the fact that human beings are unaware of that difference. Uh, so he, he kind of, he also deplores this inability of the human being to see uh, their, um, its own predicament, uh, the fact that uh, human society actually represents a deviation from the true way of nature. Uh, and he goes on to add that in the world of fish, there's no gold and no silver, therefore there's absolutely no greed, no delusion, no thievery, and no war. How wonderful that is. Sadly, however, because of the use of gold and silver in human society, there is no end to greed, delusion, thievery, and war. Uh, and of course, uh, this is um, the, the, the parables, the four parables that, that he writes. Uh, they're one of the most powerful uh, and straightforward uh, means for uh, Shoeki to criticize uh, the Tokugawa uh, regime. Uh, and uh, especially the predicament of the, the farmers, the, uh, of the, the four uh, classes. Uh, but it's, I feel that it's, um, it's much more than that. It's uh, relevant beyond that. Uh, so just uh, a couple of uh, quick uh, conclusions. Um, <laughs> as I was saying, uh, in the two different realms, the world of nature and the, uh, the world of the private law, there are, of course, two uh, different visions of the 
uh, human being, the homo naturalis, and this fake, uh, selfish, uh, petty confection uh, that exists in human society. Uh, and um, <coughs> the, the law, or the, or the texts, uh, or the writings of the, of the sages of old, uh, they act as kind of a, a, a trigger of uh, history. Uh, time uh, and history actually exist, begin to exist in Choiki's vision uh, because of the words, uh, uh, the words of the, uh, the sages of old. Uh, and as I was saying, this is, of course, part of uh, Choiki's uh, critique of the Tokugawa regime, but it's also I believe it's also relevant for larger issues and uh, notions such as uh, humanity or the, uh, the notion of history or the concept of, uh, of time. And, um, of course, um, I'm not, um, as, as I was saying, this is still work in progress, so I'm not uh, entirely, um, I don't have a final conclusion as to the status of the uh, human being within um, society, uh, within the uh, world of the private law. Uh, and probably the next uh, step would be to see how this vision that Shoiki has fits within the context of the wider um, philosophical uh, landscape of the uh, uh, Tokugawa period and, of course, within the wider uh, frame of uh, Asian thought in uh, general. So that's for probably the next uh, edition of this conference. Thank you. <laughs>